Good morning. I hope you're going to have a wonderful Friday. Weren't the sessions yesterday amazing? You know, we're very, very fortunate, and this is one of the blessings that's come out of COVID, is that there's still a way for us to connect. There's still a way for us to learn together and to appreciate each other. And so today in my talk to you, I wish I had cures. I wish I had better exercises. I wish I had better drugs. I don't have any of those. But what I do have is a message I hope that will be hopeful. I hope that it will give you one nugget to think about and that during your afternoon or maybe this weekend, you'll think about whether or not you matter. That's what we're going to talk about today. Do I matter? I would like to talk about the whole issue of thriving, living out loud, being the best you, no matter what you think that is, being the best you. But before we begin, I would like to just take a moment of silence. I know that you've all been, you know, anxious about whether or not you could get your Zoom working and you've listened to the introduction for today and you're ready. But I'd like us just to stop, just to stop and take a moment of silence. This is November. It's our month of gratitude. And we have a lot to be grateful for, don't we? We have family and we've got a roof over our heads. We've got people that do care about us. Let's take a moment and remember and be grateful. I'd also like to take a moment of silence for all those that have lost their lives for COVID. We've lost many, many residents of the United States. Let us take a moment of silence for them. So beginning in gratitude and remembering, let's think about the whole notion that there are seven and a half billion people on this planet today. I didn't count them all. You know, I let Google do that for me. But there's seven and a half billion people. And yet we're together right now. Right now we're here together. Isn't that awesome? No matter what room I walk into, no matter what store, no matter what neighbor I see, at that particular moment, that's where I'm supposed to be. I'm reminded often of Oprah when she ended her show, her long running show on interviews. She did 30,000 of them. And after every single one, she noted that the people that spoke and were interviewed by her asked one question. They all asked her, was I okay? That's what I'm going to ask at the end of this, I'm sure. But am I, was I okay? You know, that's the question that matters to many of us. We're going to talk about mattering. And mattering to me is being seen and it's being heard and it's showing up. Mattering is about people being together. You know, sometimes I think that the only time that people that are over 50, and I'm way over that, but people don't see us anymore. They don't hear us anymore, but we still show up. And so I want to think about mattering and how that, that's relevant to you. Because mattering for me is a lot about living out loud. I hope that you're living out loud in whatever way you can. Because living out loud to me means that we celebrate every single day. It's a gift. It's a present. It is our present. Living out loud, celebrating every day, every day you get your feet on your floor next to your bed, celebrate. And living out loud, I want you to tell the world that you are happy. You can be miserable, but we don't need to make the world miserable. Let's be happy about who we are right now. And living out loud also means that you're willing to, to change, to bloom, to alter every single day, because it's what we learn today that allows us to learn and it helps us to matter. You know, I started my journey, oh, the journey to right now, to being able to speak to you in 2014. 
Uh, my past, is, as we've heard, I was a public librarian for many, many years, and I loved it. I was an adult education teacher and saw many people get their dream of getting a degree as an adult. I loved it. I worked for a publication called Women in Higher Education, and I loved it. But that was closed down for retirement of the editor and the publisher. And as we turned the key that day, so we turned the lock, and I walked off on the stoop. At that point, I was 62 years old, and I said, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? You've been there. You have all had different chapters of your life. You've had work lives, you've had parenting lives, you've had friend lives. You've all had so many different chapters of your life. And at that point, I really didn't know what to do. I, I didn't know what I was going to do, but I took some time. I took about three months sitting in a pink fuzzy robe, contemplating the universe. And what came to me during that time was a Helen Keller quote, life's a daring adventure. And I walked around my apartment going, life's a daring adventure, life's a daring adventure. Life is a daring adventure. But you know what? I wasn't feeling it. I had no idea what that meant. I could hear the words, life's a daring adventure, but it wasn't feeling like that until I added the words, and I'm not done yet. Folks, life is a daring adventure, and I'm not done yet. And you're not done yet. We're here. We are here. I told a 92-year-old man one day that life's a daring adventure and you're not done yet. And he said, so what does that mean? I said, if you're not dead, you're not done. Every day is that gift of mattering. Every day we can talk about and figure out what it is that matters to us and to the world for us being here. So we're going to talk about that, what is mattering. We're going to talk about how we matter. I'm going to talk about the language of mattering. Maybe some of you speak Spanish or French, know a little Italian, but do we know the language of mattering, that we can talk to each other? Mattering to me means taking pride in who you are. You know, there's only one me. And I got to tell you, there's a lot of people that are happy about that that there is only one me. But I have to know that me is all of the moments, all of the moments since the day I was born till right now speaking with you. I have to know that each of them were given to me so that I could be who I am right now. There have been some pretty ugly moments back there. There have been some pretty ugly moments But there have been some really joyful moments. And there have been some moments that, oh, wow, you've had those too, haven't you? You've had the, the good, the bad, and the ugly moments. But being confident in who you are about mattering to yourself, that's what that all means. It's taking the time to realize that all those moments brought you to right now. And I'm glad they did. Because out of those seven and a half billion people, here we are. Each of our moments have led us to this moment. And I've always thought that aging is just like turning a kaleidoscope. Do you remember those? <laughs> you put them up to the light, all the little glass figments would fall down and you could turn it and turn it and they'd always look different. Those are the prisms of our days. If I look at my days in one way, I might have a smile on my face. And if I turn them the other way, I might have not so much smile. But you know what? It's still beautiful. Every turn of the prism, every turn of the little pieces of glass that have made our lives are beautiful. So I'd like you to raise your hand. I'd like you to raise your hand wherever you are. If you're in your apartment, in your home, if you're in a clinic, wherever you are right now, raise your hand and shout out to me what matters to you. Shout out. Shout out. Oh, I can hear somebody. 
Oh, thank you. Somebody just said that family matters to them. You're right. They said that nature does, that they've enjoyed watching the bird outside their window today. Thank you. Somebody else? Oh, they like the kitten that's on the screen because they have a cat too. You know what? What matters to you is not so unlike what matters to me. When we really break it down, there are a few things that matter. And they're not mattered by how much is in your bank account. And they're not mattered on how fast you can run. And they're not mattered on, on all of those silly things in life. What matters are those things that are deep in our heart. It's a person to smile at. It's a person to say hello to. It's a person that can just hold your hand. It's a person that can take you for a walk today. Mattering is that verb that means it's important, it's significant. That's the type of mattering we're going to talk about a little bit. And I'm hoping there'll be one nugget there for you. So the big question again is, do you matter? Because if we matter, we hope. And I think the greatest gift we can give anybody is hope. The hope that you can see me, that you can hear me, that you care about me, that I matter to you. If I can see you in whatever world you are in right now, if I can see you as the person that you are, if I can listen to you, if I can care about you, if we matter, we hope. And we hope that we can share all of the joys that come from having you in our lives. Now, everybody wonders if they matter. I'm sure you've had that thought. And you're probably sitting there at home right now going, what is this woman talking about with mattering? I really don't matter. And I've had those moments. I've sat on the couch going, I don't matter. It did not matter that I was a librarian in the big picture of life. Other people did it better. It didn't matter that I'm a parent. Everybody's a parent and everybody has kids. It did not matter that I did X, Y, Z. But even in that wondering, even in the wondering of whether or not it mattered, it mattered. All of us have that question, has my life, will my life make a difference? And have you ever thought these kind of thoughts? Have you ever thought, oh, it doesn't matter, so I'm not going to turn on that Zoom program today. It's just going to be a, a bunch of gobbledygook. So it doesn't matter that I, I showed up here today, and it doesn't matter that I call my friend today. You know, it's my friend's birthday today. It matters that I call her today. And it doesn't matter that I learn something new through these programs. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. We're more likely to say, I don't matter. I don't matter, so I'm not going to write in my journal. I'm not going to make music. I'm not going to bang on that pot and pan and say, act out loud. I don't matter, so I'll put somebody else's needs ahead of my own. And I really don't matter, so I won't ask for help. We have choices. We always have a choice. I think that's the biggest learning that I've ever made in my life as an adult, is that every single moment we live is a choice on how we face it. So have you ever loved somebody? You matter. Have you ever made somebody laugh? You matter. Now I know from um, seeing the website that there is um, laughing yoga. And I love laughing yoga. And I hope for right now, you will look at the screen, your computer screen, and you will practice the first stage of laughing yoga. Are you ready?
we have two left. <laughs> Look at that computer screen. See me and go, <laughs> she's nuts. In the chaotic world we live in, making somebody laugh is a great joy. Have you ever helped somebody? You matter. Because alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. It's another one of my favorite Helen Keller quotes. And the woman was blind. Do you think she thought she mattered? No. But alone, we can do so little, but together we can do so much. Now, there's a variety of things on the screen right now. Have you done any of these? And I remembered about a Facebook, one of those little videos that comes on Facebook, and it was about a gentleman in a clinic. He walked in a clinic and he sat down. And he's waiting for the appointment to start. And in through the door walked a young woman with a baby, a squirmy baby. And she sat down next to him. And the nurse came over with, oh, you've seen them, enough clipboards to last an hour. And the nurse gave the young woman the clipboard and said, would you please fill these out? So she's holding the baby. She's holding the clipboard. And the gentleman next to her says, can I hold your baby for you so you can do that? Now, that scenario on Facebook went viral. In the Midwest, we understand that scenario. We understand that a gentleman, a grandfather, a father asked a young woman if he could help her. We understand that. It's called a random act of kindness. We've got a term for it now. But you know the comments that were made? On that viral Facebook thing? Ooh, was he going to steal the baby? Why would she ever give him that baby? He did a random act of kindness. And you've done many of them in your life. You picked up the phone and said hello. You smiled in a grocery line to somebody whose only smile that entire day might have been yours. Have you ever sat with a friend and just held their hand? These are the random acts of kindness that make up mattering. Of my presentation, this, this is the part that, that strikes my heart that I want to share with you. You matter much more than you will ever know to so many that you don't even know. Can I repeat that again? You matter much more than you will ever know to so many that you don't even know. For any of those that have been teachers out there, you know what this means. You have no idea what ripples have gone through the world because of your teaching. I think about the mailman that brings me my mail every day. He has no idea the joy that he brings and a few bills and some other stuff. But he has no idea of how important his job is to me. The factory worker that made my car has no idea the ripples of where I've been in my car because they built it safely. We have no idea. Now, if we were together in a non-COVID auditorium, you would have found at your place a little pebble. It's a little tiny blue pebble. And I would hand it to you so that you could put it on your counter or on your windowsill and remember that your life is a ripple. When you take a walk outside in your neighborhood with your partner. You have no idea what everybody in the neighborhood is thinking. Now you might think, oh, they're thinking bad thoughts. They're not. I think courage. I think love. I think compassion. You have no idea 
how much you matter to people and the ripples that you're putting out to the world every time you just get up out of bed in the morning. You know, we talked a little bit about the language. Ah, language. The language that I think most of us are used to is the language I call the shouldos, the mustos, the have tos. All of that language is really heavy. Doesn't it feel heavy on your shoulders? I should have done this. I must do this. I have to do this. That's part of the choice thing that I learned. I don't have to do anything. One student wanted to throw things at me as I made that comment. She said, she said, I said, well, what do you have to do? She said, I have to get up at seven o'clock. And I said, no, you don't. It's a choice. And she said, no, I have to get up at seven o'clock. I have to be able to feed my husband at 7.15. So I need to get up at seven o'clock. And I said, no, you don't. You can get up at 6.30. You can get up at 7.14. You can be late. Get up at 7.30. Choice. It's a choice we make. And we forget that every moment's a choice, just like this language of mattering. What if, instead of the should have, would have, could have, we said to somebody, your smile today made me, I am really happy to have met you today. You have changed my life. What if somebody says to you, I admire the way that you handle the problems in your life. Our language of mattering is softer. It's kinder. And every time we speak the language of mattering to someone else, we're being kinder and softer to ourselves. I wish that I could sit across from a table today with a coffee cup and talk to you and tell you how much you made me feel special when you showed up today. Pick one of these sentences, one of this language of mattering, and try it out. See what kind of impact it has on your partner, in your clinics, with your family members. The language of mattering matters. Now, one of the things with our language, again, is that we get into this habit of just ask, asking mattering, matter of fact questions. Have you ever done that? I used to do it all the time with my sons. They, they live in two different parts of the country. I would call, and here's the conversation. Hi, Mom. Hi, how are you? Is it raining there? My son lives in Seattle. It's always raining in Seattle. Oh, yeah, it's going to rain here, too. Yeah, looking, looking forward to the weekend. Sure. How's work? Good, good, glad. Yeah, good. Oh, I'm glad you called today. Um, talk to you next week. Okay, bye. One of the other blessings from COVID is that when we now talk, my sons and I, they're amazing young men, when we talk now, we talk about mattering kind of questions. I don't care about the weather anymore. I care about what rocked their world. I care about how they're facing being COVIDed. I'm concerned about how they have put their lives together in unusual and chaotic times. And we talk about that. Our hearts talk rather than our heads talking. So I remind you to also talk about mattering questions to our family members so that we can speak from our hearts and not just from our heads. Now we're talking about all this, but I think maybe you need permission slips. Maybe you need a permission to do the things that you need. So I encourage you right now to hold your hand. I'd like you to hold your hand. 
And if you're with your partner, hold your partner's hand. Because what I'd like you to do is to realize that perhaps, just perhaps, you've been under a little stress these days. Perhaps somewhere in your world, things have been stressful. And we need to have a way to get through that. So what I'm encouraging you to do is to hold your hand and start massaging your thumb. Massage your thumb. Massage your thumb and remove all of the sadness and the grief that is within you and your soul right now. Massage your thumb and bring out all of the sadness and grief and allow in joy. And then I'd like you to move to your index finger. In your index finger, massage your in index finger and massage out all the fear you hold. Are you fearful? Absolutely. Are you afraid of a doctor's announcement? Are you afraid that something bad's going to happen? Are you afraid, afraid, afraid? Absolutely. But for right now, massage your index finger and massage out that fear and allow courage to come into your life. Now, you might know what we're going to do when we massage our middle finger. We're going to massage out the anger, the anger that's in us. We are angry about things that have happened to us. And many times we have a right to be angry. But right now, massage your middle finger and massage out that anger and feel calm. Your ring finger, that's the finger of community. It's the finger of continuity. And what I'd like you to do is to massage your ring finger and get rid of the worry. Get rid of the worry that's in your heart. Once again, we have lots to be worried about. If we made a list of what to be worried about, it would fill pages of things. But for right now, Massage your ring finger and let the worry go and feel peace. Now that little pinky of yours, that little finger, massage that because sometimes we feel just like the little finger, that we feel too small. Again, that we don't matter, that it doesn't matter. But I really am glad I've got my little pinky. And when I massage my little finger, I massage out all the feelings of a low self-esteem, all the feelings of it's not worth it, I'm not worth it. I massage that out. And I realize that I am confident and all is well. Now take a moment again and massage your hand. Massage your hand. In the days ahead, maybe it'll be in an hour. Maybe it'll be before Thanksgiving, whatever that's going to mean to you this year. You might find some stress in your life. You just might. But I want you to look down at your hand, and I want you to massage your hand into joy, into courage, into peace, into calm, and into confidence. Do this again for yourself and do it for your partners. That's your permission slip, is to not live within stress, but to live and to answer how you could answer the question of living out loud. You know what? After having permission, to get calm and confident and get more peaceful, I could live out loud a little easier. And there are ways that we can show that we matter. There's 10 of them that I found, but you know what? I know you've got other ones.
just say thank you. It is so easy with the partners that we live with to forget to say thank you. It is so hard to forget to be on the positive. It is so hard to give somebody a little gift. I'm not talking about big gifts. I'm talking about a pat on the shoulder. The gift of walking on a new block rather than the old block. Oh, the gift of eye contact and bragging in, in public about the person that you're caring for. Keep your promises. Treat people equally. There are ways to show others and ourselves that we matter. Now, this looks like a slide to you, and it is indeed, but it's a picture of what's hanging up on my mirror. This hangs up on my mirror, and every morning I wake up and I look at my mirror and I see the words, you matter to me. You matter to me. I share it with you because I'm hoping you understand how much you matter to me right now. And I hope tomorrow morning, I hope somebody does it. Get a little post-it note, get a little piece of tape with a post, whatever, put on your mirror, you matter to me. So that everyone who walks in your restroom, your powder room, your bathroom, whatever, will look and smile at your mirror because you say you matter to me. You know what? We complicate our days so much. It drives me. It drives me to have more coffee. <coughs> we complicate our lives so much. Because if you miss somebody, call them. Zoom them. Make a list of the people that really would love to hear from you. And once a week, call somebody. If you have questions about something, ask them. It doesn't help us to keep our questions inside of us. If you have a question about care, if you have a question for your partner, ask. If you like something, explain why you like it. I really, really like this coffee mug. And the reason I really, really like it, it's big and it's colorful, but I'd love to share that with you. And if I want something, I need to ask for it. No one can read your mind. No one can read your mind. And if you love somebody, say so. Say so in big ways and little ways. And if you want to be understood, figure out a way to be able to do that. Don't complicate your life. You matter. You matter. And so what I'd like us to do is to think about the mattering manifesto. Now, you're sitting at home again, but I want to hear you. I'm sitting in Madison, Wisconsin. I need to hear you as you scream this out in your rooms. I need you to say out loud this following phrases. I am enough. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I am enough. I have influence. I am a genius in creating my life. I have contributions to make. I have gifts that other people need. I know that my actions affect my mattering. Did you say them? Did you say the words? 
Were they hard words to say? Is it hard to say that I am enough? The world tells us we should all be something different. But out of seven and a half billion people, you are enough. I have influence. We don't feel we've got influence at times. For many of you, I'm sure you don't feel the influence you have. Your influence is by waking up and opening those eyes. You are influencing the world just by that. You've all heard about the butterfly flying in China that affects the weather that's in Montreal. Just by us opening our eyes every morning affects the world. You have influence. You have a genius in creating your own life. You weren't always what you are right now, just like I was the librarian, I was the whatever. I've been other things in my life. And I'm a genius in creating it. Now, other people might look at it and go, oh, you could have done better. I don't care. I'm a genius in creating my life because I have contributions to make. And I have a gift that other people need. And I don't know what that is. I don't know what that gift is, but I know that if I open my eyes in the morning and I take a step and I keep going through my day, that I will have a gift that I can share because my actions define my mannering. Now, this is a postcard I send to folks. It's an actual postcard because I would be sending this to you. I would be sending it to you to remind yourself that I just wanted you to know you matter to me. Is there somebody that you could send a letter to? Pick up the phone again. After this call, your only homework after this session is to tell somebody that they matter to you. Your only homework after this session is after you've told somebody else that they matter, that you do look in the mirror and you say, I matter to me. Now that's not a lot of homework. I wonder if you're gonna give yourself an A. Will you tell somebody after this session, you matter to me? When I, when I gave this program once, um, this gentleman came up afterwards and he said to me, you know, I have forgotten to tell my wife of 42 years that she still matters to me. He said, I tell her I love her, but I don't say to her, you matter to me. The word's a little different, isn't it? And to whom can you share those words today? You matter to me. I matter to me. So, I hope through our time together that you are so ready to keep mattering, that you are so ready to remember that out of seven and a half billion people, you are unique and you are special and that there is a reason that you are on this planet. And I'll ask, what would you do with your own wild, glorious chance at this thing we call life. It's one of my favorite poets, Mary Oliver, that says that. What will you do with your own wild and glorious chance at this thing we call life? I hope that you'll reach out. I hope that you'll send me an email. I hope that we will meet in person someday. I would so love that. I end all of my emails, all my conversations, all my texts with these three phrases. Hugs, and here is your 
virtual hug. Be safe in these, these wild days and you matter. Thank you so much. Remember to massage, remember to look in the mirror, remember to talk to the people that you love. I appreciate your time today and have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Wow. Thank you so much, Mary Helen, for being here and for providing us that opportunity to slow down and actually think some of those bigger thoughts for a minute. And I didn't realize how much I needed to hear that today. Rachel, thank you. And, um, you know, it's it's been one of my real joys on this adventure that I started um, with Life's a Daring Adventure to realize that that's the piece I don't think I, I knew, that I really do matter and that you do. I mean, for you to call me that day out of the blue and say, you know, you're busy. And then we kind of got um, disoriented with the little COVID issue. Um, but you know what, those are, those are mattering things that we got to meet. And that's why I was very excited to be able to see you and um, be able to chat. So um, what, what, pieces for you? What's the rock you're taking away? What would be the pebble um, from the speech today that you're yeah. curious about? One of the things that, that really struck me as you were speaking, you know, we're coming into the holiday season and, you know, been thinking a lot about that, those kinds of things. And, you know, it's going to look different this year. Yeah. But one of the things that I love, um, the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Oh it's a Christmas God. tradition for me. <laughs> it's mine. And yep. It's one of my favorite movies. And I couldn't help but think about it as, during your talk today as you talked about, you know, your life mattering in such a way that the world would be such a different place if you right. were never born. Right. And right. of course, the premise of the movie is that George Bailey gets a chance to see what it would be like if he had never been born. And it was just so lovely. <laughs> and and that is one of my favorite. It's that one, Rachel. And the other one is Mr. Holland's opus. Um, he worked for 30 years and, um, you know, they kind of forced him out of the school system. And he said, it doesn't matter. I go in for 30 years doing my job, but who cares? But the community cared and they showed him that. But for so many of us, we don't get that. We leave our jobs and nobody is there to applaud us. Nobody's there to tell us that. So that's why between those two movies, maybe that's the new Thanksgiving tradition is you just sit down and watch two movies and realize how important we all are. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Hey, we have some questions from our audience from today. So I want to make sure we have time to get oh, to them. Great. Um, oh, good. Good. One of the um, one question. Um, can you talk a little bit about anxiety and depression, and how that that fits in 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 Parkinson's disease? Anxiety and depression Absolutely. are very common. Um, so how does that fit into all of this? It's called holding on really tight. It's called, and that's that's the reason I do the the permission slip. Um, of of really ho literally holding on tight and massaging to to know that you are depressed um, to be able to again talk to somebody. Um, I I lived for many many years with a clinical depressive who would would describe it as there is just no light. I'm at the bottom of a well and there's no light. Um, and it must have been very painful for him to live with me because, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm a full glass kind of girl. But but it was trying to just hold on. And again, I wish I had a cure for that. I don't. But it's in the small moments. It's if you're really not doing well, you've got to say something. You've got to have some way, even if it's turning your coffee cup upside down when you're not feeling well, whatever kind of language you want to use to convey that. But nobody knows unless you tell us. 
Right. So, and that, yeah. that's one thing that we talk about a lot in, in support groups and things is that oftentimes for folks with PD, the depression and anxiety is really part of the PD. And mm -hmm. so, you know, finding help for that, whether it's medication or counseling or combination of those things mm -hmm. um, is very, very important. Thank it's you critical. for that. Mm -hmm. um, another question that we had, um, this is kind of similar. Um, my spouse's Parkinson's disease often makes him angry and crabby. And how can I feel calm and peaceful with that around? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know what? If you find the answer to that, write the book because you'll make a million dollars. That, that That's the first answer. The second answer is the only person, the only person, the only person you can take care of is yourself. We live, and as I said, I lived with a partner with severe depression and there was anger, um, yes, in the home. The only person I could take care of to make sure I took a bath, make sure that I could relax and take care of me because I was no good to him or anybody else in my life if I didn't take care of me. So I know that's not the answer you probably want, but it's the only answer I know is that I couldn't be the good partner. I hope I was in all those times um, without taking care of me. Absolutely. And I know that's such a struggle for so many of it our is. care partners it to, is. to take that time to prioritize yourself when there's someone else who relies oh, on you yeah. so heavily. Yeah. Absolutely. 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 Um, we do have another question, um, the, referring to the last bullet of your mannering manifesto. Um, they ask, do we need to act to matter or does just being create mattering and contribute to mattering. Oh, I would love that conversation. I'd have that coffee cup right next to that person and we'd be chatting. Um, I think that's what I, I try to bring up in that point is that it is my actions at times. It's my actions of maybe putting my hand on somebody's shoulder or waving to somebody. Um, we have um, a really good friend across the street who has Parkinson's. That's why I was so honored to be part of this. And every day they go out and they take their walk. And every day, many people don't even look at them. They're not seen, they're not heard. And it's the wave. You know, my wave, which is an action, is probably more important to them than anything I could ever say because they are being seen. So it is moving the mattering from just knowing that you're really important and to take some action to show somebody else they matter. Um, yeah, Thank, great question, great question. Absolutely. Um, one more here. Um, do you have advice for how we can keep doing those random acts of kindness that you talked about during these times of COVID and isolation uh -huh. and so many of us are so far apart? We are. Um, well, you know, I'm going to really remember how to hug. Huh? Um, I don't think my boys will ever be able to get out of the room for about an hour from the first hug when I see them. <laughs> um, however, I do sort of have a list. Um, and I had to make, we, we call it here the pandemic list of what we can do to make contacts. So um, one of the things is I do have those postcards or letters or note cards, and I try to send one a week to somebody, to somebody I've known. Um, I try to, I am not crafty, um, but the the groups that have made masks, and you can do all kinds of stuff. I, um, I send postcards to vets, and you can get right on the, um, the vets, just Google volunteer postcards vets, and you get a list of names that you can do that with. I think what I needed to do was to find ways not to stay within myself, but to do something for somebody else. So that was my way. But it's also sharing the books, sharing the puzzles with somebody. Um, if we're making Thanksgiving dinner for two of our neighbors, because I don't think I know how not to cook a 20 pound turkey. So I, I don't know how to do that. So, um, but, but it doesn't have to be a big way but it's a way that you feel like it mattered you did something. 
So whether it's making, uh, you know, your favorite pie, um, and that you'd have to send to me because I don't bake and you might bake. Um, yeah. Make a list. I think, I think if you sit down like after this session and say, what are five things I could do? Because we're going to be in this little bubble thing for a while. You're going to have an opportunity to keep trying to, to do things like that. Yeah. I hope that helps. And I'd love to hear what you come up with. Yeah. That's so important. And that's something that, that I've been trying to do a lot more in my life for the past um, few months is being even more conscious of when I go to walk the dog, make sure that I'm waving to the neighbors and, right. you know, right. shouting across the street, hi, how are you? Um, and reaching out to the folks that I hadn't talked to in a while, whether that's picking up the phone right. or sending a note card. Um, and, and more more things that, that I would get myself out of my own head, the better I feel. And Rachel, one thing, um, since we're the Midwest group here, we also know that there's going to be snow soon. Remember to knock on a door or leave a note on a door for somebody you're not going to be seeing because of the snow. Um, some people have made um, red yellow and green signs that they can put in their window if they need help on the block. And we did this back in March. So if somebody needed something, they would put up the red sign. Um, but make sure that during the snowstorms that are coming, people know that you care about them even then, because that's going to be really hard for folks again, that being able to get out. Absolutely. I think that idea of Hey, Mary, I think we lost Hi. Rachel just a little bit there. She was kind of and breaking we, out. I know, she was breaking up, yes. <laughs> yeah, she's down there, but, you know, this new virtual world, I keep saying it. It's I know, just... we just keep going, don't we? <laughs> yes. yes, yes. So um, my name is Natasha. I'm from the Iowa chapter. Hi. But I just figured I would um, jump in and just get everybody else's questions answered because I know that um, – you were a topic that everyone is looking forward to. So oh, great, Natasha. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, of course. Okay. So we have a question here that says, can you speak to the idea of setting achievable goals? You know, I think everybody wants to eat the elephant. They do. Um, I work with people. My my main job right now is a business called Your Heart Dreams. Because I think everybody, regardless of candles on the cake, still have a dream in their heart. And a lot of people have right now been doing, they want to write a book. All right. They want to write the bestseller. But you know what? You can write a book. And uh, here's an easy way to do that. Take the alphabet. Okay, Natasha? Take okay. the alphabet. What kind of things do you know something about? If you were going to write a book, what would you write a book on? Oh, gosh. Um you know, let's see here. Um, I have three kids and I feel okay, like parenting. they're all so different. So parenting. Okay, parenting. Okay, parenting. But if you take the alphabet and you break it down into chapters of A. Mm -hmm. So A is for um, authenticity of children. B is for um, bath time. C is for crying sessions. And you write a, <laughs> okay? So you could have a parenting book. If you wrote, you know, 26 letters and you wrote four pages on each, you'd have a 125-page book when you were done with that. We need wow. to break things down. And I think we, we think so big, we forget to get little. And so, um, and if anybody writes their bestseller book, you know, feel free to send me a copy. But ABCs, <laughs> whatever it is, break it down into small parts because you need to feel successful. Stop beating your yeah. head against a big, big brick wall. Find a little bit that will just make joy. I love that. I really love that. I'm going to use that. I Good. really am going to use that. Yeah, Good. I'm not going to write a book though, but okay. I'm but use that. but the AB, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be good at that. Okay. So we have somebody who's asking, what brings you joy? This, this, um, you know, uh, for the last four years, I've really been a professional speaker and come March 13th, that kind of all went away. 
it's it's really hard to be a speaker when there's nobody to speak to and there's no room to speak to. I have a dream. My dream is that I will be on a stage with 2,000 people in the audience. Maybe it'll be a national Parkinson's Association meeting. There'll be 2,000 people in the audience, and I'm in a red jacket with a lavalier telling people again, they're not alone. They're not alone, and you matter. And if I could do that, that's the dream. But um, what gives me joy is family, having a roof over my head, friends in my heart, and uh, good, good work to do. Yeah. Well, so, you're doing great work. You really are. Let's I, I kind of like it. <laughs> yeah, have, you're, yeah. Well, you're great at it. Rachel told us how wonderful you are at it, and she was not joking. So this well, is this has this been a has real been honor great. for me. Good. Yes, we had. Let's see. We just have a couple messages that came in, too. Um, let's see. They, they all come in anonymous, so I'm not sure who oh, sure. submitted it, but they just wanted to thank you, Mary Helen. I really needed to hear this message today. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure that's like one of your favorite things. It is. Hear. That's it. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we had another one that said your words mattered to them today. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I like that one. <laughs> I like that a lot. No one's ever said yes. that. <laughs> so thank oh, you. Oh, that's you. wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. This says, it's sometimes scary to talk about feelings. I'm out of practice at that. How do mm -hmm. I find the courage to do it? This is something I actually struggle with too. Um, I agree. I, um, again, that's an excellent question. And there was a point in my life that that really came to fore. What I had to do was there is a chart on Google that has a picture of emojis with different feelings. And I printed that out. And again, put it on my bathroom mirror because I didn't know what the feelings were, let alone talk about them. But I, I would find myself scared, but I, I didn't have the right word for it, or I was lonely, or I was whatever. And just even knowing what the feelings are, then I could touch base with what's in my heart. Um, and that that mattering language of, I am so grateful you asked me that question. I am so grateful that you called me today. I am so whatever. If we start using it, we get better at it. And the more we hear it, the more, yeah, we can use it too. Um, so just start just by yeah. saying, I really admire the way that you picked up when Rachel was going kind of blurry back yeah. there. I really, but I do, I admire that you, you just stepped in and you made it flawless for all of us. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay. Let's see here. Um, oh, this is probably, I feel a big question lots of people would have right now. How do you, how do we keep focused and positive when we find ourselves having different views of COVID and COVID preventions within our circle of loved ones? Absolutely. So just different views. We do. We do. Yeah. We do. And um, again, I, I would like to say that conversation is the only way to get through this. We need to be able to talk to each other. We have a friend um, that we have different views on this. And I have said that your your friendship is more important to me, mm -hmm. but we need to figure out how we can do this. So I'm sorry, but we're going to be out in the snowbanks talking because I don't want to lose her as a friend, but I want to be safe. Yeah. Um, and so it, it really is making, again, you've got to take care of yourself. I'm yeah. 68. You know, that's why I haven't seen my boys. They're worried that they'd kill me. Um, they're not yeah. going to kill me. But but it is an important message that we we do have to take care of ourselves. And if so, if you're on the mask side, then wear the mask. But don't take the mask off because somebody else wants you to take it off. Take care of yourself. Yeah. If you're yeah. not a mask person because of whatever, that's okay too. But don't jeopardize the other person. So, so st I, stick to your beliefs and be true to yourself. Well, take care, of, take care of yourself. Yeah. We are so used to not taking care of ourselves. We go with what somebody else needs. Yeah. So take good care of yourself and be safe. Hugs, be safe. You matter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. That's a, let's that's see a rough here. one though. Yeah. And this one is actually kind of a little rough too. 
Um, I live alone and I feel like I'm being a bother when I call friends and family. Is there any advice on that? Well, they must pick up the phone. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a choice. Um, the other person's got a choice too. So if you're being a bother, somebody's going to let you know that. And we all know how to do that. We've, we're all really good at that. We're all good at that. But I think that, and the, um, the number of um, solo agers right now is enormous, just enormous. The loneliness in this world is driving me crazy, literally, um, because we need to be able to fill our hearts and we can fill our hearts with other people. So what I encourage you to do is keep reaching out and you bug everybody in the world. Do whatever it is. Again, write the postcards for the vet. Move your circle out a little bit more if you need to so that you don't feel like you're bugging them. Move the circle. Move the circle out. Whether it's the neighbor, put out, put pictures in your windows that make people smile when they walk past. Do other things that br bring out the circle. But I got to tell you that yeah. you do matter and people know that. And they're going to want to make sure you do. I hope. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. Oh my gosh. You have been so inspiring. This has been wonderful. Oh, thank and you. I, um, I hope we talk again. I'm glad that I, I got so to jump too. in and talk with you. <laughs> good, good. So I, I just well. wanted to thank you though. And, um, I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. This I has will, been so great. I will. Good. And to everybody out there, um, really enjoy your Thanksgiving. This is our season to be grateful. And though it is, a wild chaotic time yeah. there is a lot to be grateful for and may your tables be full of peace and love all the best thank you so much thank you Bye -bye. so much mary have a great day thank you all right i wanted to remind everyone there's an exercise break coming up next so if you are in a spot to um, go ahead and set up we're going to do a little rock steady boxing thanks mary have a great day bye bye <laughs>